Let's talk about Michigan. Now, I put Michigan at number one. And the general criticism of that is that they haven't played anybody. I think that that's somewhat fair, and their schedule has not been difficult, certainly. Now, they did just dismantle Nebraska, who came in with one of the better rushing defenses in the country and one of the better rushing offenses in the country. Totally dismantled them. I've made the comparison that Michigan is like a boa constrictor. There's an inevitability to their win. There's an inevitability to their dominance. And that's because they are constantly playing with the odds in their favor. This is what I mean by that. Every single set of downs, there's some odds that are going on. And the odds are, what is third down going to be? Is it going to be a long yardage situation? Is it going to be a short yardage situation? And you're turning the dial as an offense and a defense. You're trying to create long yardage situations on defense and short yardage situations on offense. Well, Michigan on first downs this season offensively is averaging 6.95 yards per play. All right, that means that their average for the year is about 5.6 yards on third down. That's actually pretty low. And then you look at their conversion rate, they're fifth in the country right now in third down conversion rate at 56%. Well, they do this by being dominant on first down. You see, everyone wants to concentrate on third down and what's going on and who's making plays and so on and so forth, but really it's about first down. And what you have to do on first down is win at the line of scrimmage. Now, you can do this in two ways. You can do this with schematics, putting extra players in the box, or you can do this with technique. It's just a man against a man, and whoever's going to play with the most strength, effort, and technique is going to win. I want to show you what Michigan does on first down because it's subtle and yet so effective in turning the dial towards their odds in order to make themselves more successful for the entire game. This is a first down first quarter against Nebraska, okay? Watch this run play first of all. The double team is covering up the defensive lineman and getting movement. This allows the tight end to work up to the second level or even the third level if the linebacker squeezes in particular in the wrong gap. So he works up to the third level, the running back does a great job, he finishes physical, and what do we have? Second and one. All right, doesn't look like much, but guess what? The movement up front, covering up color, there's no contact for the running back until at least the second level and sometimes the third level. What does that present? Short yardage situations on second down. Let's take a look at the next play here. Again, it's first and 10. Michigan lines up, pretty traditional set. They're going to bring an extra tight end in here. Old school eyes formation, and now you're going to pull this backside guard, number 65. But again, I want you to see the movement right here. That's the left guard. The movement he gets on the defensive lineman displaces that area and allows these blocks to take place and cover up color. So when Michigan is blocking, they are covering up that color and allowing the back to not get contacted until he's downfield and what happens it's second and two that's the physical inevitability of Michigan's run game one more example here on a first down now it's a first down it's the same concept now to the right side instead of the left now you're going to pull the, the left guard around and I want you to see all these blocks take place first of all great movement from that front side, moving the defensive lineman down. You've got a tight end up on the linebacker, the pulling guard kicking out, the fullback also kicking out, and there is a huge lane, and look, there is no red for Donovan Edwards to look at. And what does it do? Presents a second and four. This offense does such a good job of being effective and physical, covering up color, maintaining their blocks, and getting displacement. Okay, They are moving the defensive line off the ball. Two things that I said right there that their defense does a great job of combating. One is displacement, and the other is sustaining blocks. On the other side of this coin is a defense. What do you have to do to stop the run, in particular on first down? Get off blocks and don't allow movement. Well, let's take a look at the Michigan defense and look at their front seven, and how are they doing in this exact situation? It's first down immediate swim by the nose tackle. He's getting around the offensive lineman. You've got a double team, but I want you to see the Michigan defensive player fight through the double team. And now you're starting to see linebackers. You've got the swim move and the fight from that lineman on the double team. They're getting off blocks. And now what do you get? First and 10 to second and nine. That dial is swinging into the defense's direction. The odds are swinging into the defense's direction. 
Now you take a look at the next play here. Again, it's first down. Are they doing a good job of not being displaced and getting off blocks? Let's take a look up front, the three defensive linemen. It's gonna be a run play over to the right side, their left. They're initially blocked, but watch them fight through these blocks. First of all, you've got un unblocked guys back here. You've got a defensive lineman fighting through. You've got an unblocked player back there. So now the running back doesn't see the backs of his own players. He sees yellow. He sees yellow helmets, maze, I'm sorry. He sees maze in there, and there's nowhere to run. Why? Because they do not get displaced, and they get off of blocks. It's very easy. Let's take one more look at another first down play. First and 10 for Nebraska. Now they're gonna try to run an option to the left side. I want you to take a look at the defensive end because right here he's blocked. Look, he's peeking into the backfield and he realizes I've gotta get to the other side or else we're gonna get beat because right now Nebraska looks like they're in good position. There's just a pitch key out here, but look, now my defensive end has fought through. Now he's not being blocked because he is getting off the block. He fights over the top of that block, and there he is to stop it. And what is it? It's second and eight. That's how you win. That's why you're a boa constrictor if you're the Michigan Wolverines is because there's an inevitability to this game. Why is there an inevitability to this game? Because the odds are constantly in their favor. Just like going to Vegas, the odds are constantly in the house's favor. Well, when you play Michigan because of what they do on first down, sustaining and getting displacement on offense and then doing the opposite on defense up front, that's why Michigan is so good. And that's why I put them up at number one, because whoever goes to play them is going to have to deal with that front seven defensively and that offensive line on the offensive side of the ball. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here. From game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings, we've got everything you need as a college football fan right here, College Football on Fox.